Hi everyone, Ed here today, but the van isn't. Now we finally opened Pandora's box. We're addressing the elephant in the room, if you will, and we've taken it away to have the gearbox looked at to find out what's causing all of our problems. So the van has gone to see Zane, uh, Sanitech Engineering, and he's stripping out the gearbox and he's going to find out exactly what's going on. So we won't get it back now until it's spanky and it's working well. Okay viewers, the idea being the throttle linkage should push the pivot on the gearbox as far back as it can, which it currently is. The next trick is to make sure that the throttle butterflies are open fully. No, they're not. So is that now the gearbox restricting the movement or is it the throttle stop? What we've discovered, and if you're doing this yourself, it's useful to know, the throttle linkage that goes back up to the throttle pivot has a screw thread which wasn't easy to spot but Chris spotted that so we've now unwound oh a good probably centimeter of thread and that now allows the throttle butterfly to open vertically as you can see and return and seat fully closed and Chris is underneath now and he's readjusted the gearbox throttle linkage so that when this is now at full throttle the gearbox is in its full throttle position so we should be there why have i got coolant down there well that's a whole new problem we've just found coolant so as always this van is a gift that keeps on giving air filters back on springs are back on down by the throttle the linkage at the gearbox is tight and in the correct yeah. position. So what we're saying now is test drive. Test drive. Test drive. Put it all back. <laughs> you make it sound like it'll be such a success. Test drive. <laughs> test drive. And we've tightened the water cooler pipe. Yeah. To the right. Less, less talky talky, more fixy fixy. Right. It started very well it drove out of the garage very well are we nervous you bet oh yes <laughs> we've still got the judder he's doing it all right so we've done some feckling and basically it's no different so we've basically reached the point where me and ed are giving up in respects of trying to sort ourselves and then it needs to go to um, Ed's mate Zane to uh, Zane to let him have it for a couple of days and just try and see if he can sort out what the problem is because we've run out of ideas. So on that note, we're going to go and get something to eat, I think. Well, viewers, we're taking a van over to see the chap who's going to look at my gearbox. We're having a few issues. We've alluded to it in previous videos. What it's doing is juddering massively when you pull away quickly uh, or do a hill start. Both of which are pretty inconvenient. We thought it was axle tramp. We've replaced the rear leaf springs um, for some considerable cost to, to be fair. That didn't solve it. We've gone through a lot of work, as you've seen, sorting the throttle linkage out and the kickdown linkage. All that now is absolutely spot on. We've got new engine mounts, they've been fitted, and a new gearbox mount, and it's still doing it. Approaching Glastonbury Touring, Glastonbury, the home of mystery, mythical, mysterious beings. If you're watching this from overseas and you've heard of Glastonbury, we're about to go straight past it, to be honest. Now, there in front, chaps, is Glastonbury Tour. 
the home of mystery, myth and legend. Don't we bring you to the best places on this channel? And a bit more trivia, basically Glastonbury is very much in the centre of the mystical ancient Isle of Avalon, the home of King Arthur. We are now leaving the place of wizards and orcs. Well, we're approaching Pilton now, everybody, the home of the Glastonbury Music Festival. You may have heard of it. Apparently it's quite popular. But obviously not last year or this year because of Covid. Oh, I've said that word again. Here we go. This is Pilton. The land of the Glastonbury Festival. Right, this is Zane, the very nice man who's going to have a quick look at our gearbox for us. We've arrived at Zane's workshop. As you can see, he's got some fantastic kit in here which he's working on. Drag racing kit, race kit. Absolutely, look at everybody's dream, isn't it, chaps? We have prob problems with it running really rich and I've, I've rebuilt the carburetor, so right. the carburetor's not on there now. This is a centrifugal supercharger. Compressed air goes through a... A radiator there, an intercooler, and then up, and then it blows in through the top of the carburetor. So this is a blow through. Yeah. So I understand there's quite a difference between suck through and blow through, yes. isn't there? And how you set the carburetor? Well, yes. how you do everything. Yeah, the carburetor's got to be completely built differently. And um, yeah, so this makes about 800 horsepower. It's wow. pretty quick. Yeah. You're is not wrong. For drag racing, or yeah, it's straight generally... legal though. Oh, it's good. So what's it, um, what time is it doing? I found a timing ticket in all the paperwork for 9.6, but I was told it has run a 9.2. It's a sub-10 car? Yeah. That's impressive. Okay, for, for those that don't know, a 10-second yeah. car is, is impressive. It would be doing probably 135 plus. Yeah. Maybe 140 at the end of the quarter. Actually, being supercharged, it might even be quicker than that in the end. I haven't looked through the timing ticket. Yeah. This one does two, two miles to the gallon. Two, two to the gallon. At the moment, and it should be doing four or five. It's not running right. Yeah, but it looks magnificent. Yeah, it's, it's really nicely built. Yeah. That, that is just There was fantastic. no real expense spared on the build, right? It was, well, we've already got one. So okay, <laughs> okay. We've got exactly the same car. Have you? But not built like that. So we've now got the van at Zane's workshop. Zane's going to work his magic. Hopefully it will be a nice, easy fix. It's got new engine mounts. Yeah. Another new gearbox mount, but I think it's already collapsed. And the nuts and bolts you put on are still tight, and that prop is absolutely rigid now. There's no play in it at all. Right, good. Oh, that's stayed. Well, that's good. stayed. Yeah. So at the moment, everything's optimised. Yeah. Okay, as much as we can. Optimised for the shuddering. Yeah, yeah, and Chris and I spent a long time on Sunday getting the throttle linkage right as yeah. well. We even read the manual. Right, right, Zane, okay. good to see you again. All right, yeah. And we'll, we'll, we'll talk again. I'll keep you posted. Thanks ever so much. Okay. Brilliant. Take care. That's it viewers, the van is there, it should be fixed in no time. So with that, back to the kettle. So there it is. The van has now been dropped off and Sanitech Engineering seems going to work his magic. We hope you enjoyed that episode. For everybody that's subscribed so far, thank you ever so much. If you haven't, please think about subscribing. We really do very much appreciate it. So join us next time when we should ideally have a van back with a working transmission and we can take it for a proper test drive and who knows actually start doing some real mileage in it now so until next time take care goodbye so i've just received a gearbox update from our friend zane over in shepton mallet basically it's got to come out the gearbox is not going to repair itself by magic so certainly the, the initial findings are that the front clutch pack is is dead. I, I don't think there's any other way to put it, to be honest. Well, Zane certainly found damage that reflects the symptoms we had. So that's good. It's no longer an unknown. So yeah, let's see.